I work for an organization that deals in the unexplainable. Hello, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I can't share who I am and I can't even share my name with you so for the future of this document I will refer to myself as Pepper. There's not much I can tell you about the day-to-day -day details of my job. But I can say that in this world there's plenty of supernatural things, creatures that can't be comprehended, cryptids, ghosts, even local horror stories. All of them are rooted in some sort of truth. It's my job to kill these things or at the very least protect the public from them. I tell you this because I believe everyone should know, the creatures that go bump in the night are actually there. I want to start with an interview I had with the victims of one of these supernatural attacks. The document you read has been transcribed from audio to text. The name of the victim has been changed in order to keep their identity a secret. Asterisk tape begin, 5.02 a.m. Pepper, Sarah is it? Sarah, yes th that's me. Pepper, hello Sarah my name's Pepper, I understand you've been through hell tonight. Which makes sense if you find yourself in my office. Sarah, are you sure I'm safe here what if it comes back for me what if? Pepper, Sarah I assure you nothing will get you while you're in this office. Now Sarah I need you to explain everything that's happened. No matter how insane it seems every detail and no matter how minor. If you think it's important to the story then include it. I will inform you this whole conversation and further on will be recorded. Do you understand? Sarah, yes I understand. Pepper, good please begin. Sarah, it started about three days ago, I was at Jim's Coffee on my way to work. There was this homeless man outside the shop. He asked if I had some change I could spare. Well you see I hadn't slept well the night before and was in a grumpy mood. I'll admit I was an asshole, I told him to stop being a leech and go get a job. He didn't like that, grabbing my arm he pulled me close to him. It was like the colored part of his eyes had disappeared, and he stared into mine. You should learn to be kinder, he said. It may not sound that scary to you but something about the way he said it terrified me. I ended up skipping coffee that day. Pepper. This man did he have any distinguishing details you can remember about him? Sarah, no he seemed normal enough, well I guess he seemed pretty clean for being a homeless man. Pepper, interesting, please continue. Sarah, the rest of the day went on pretty normal, when I got home my door was unlocked. It seemed weird but I figured I just forgot. I couldn't sleep that night, I was so tired the next day that my boss sent me home and told me to get some sleep. When I got there my door was left open. There was no way I forgot to close the door I went into the garage cause I keep a handgun in there. I went through my house checking each room. I couldn't help but think of the homeless man. I got through the whole house finding nothing. I stopped in my bathroom to wash my face. I must have been super tired to leave my door wide open. I looked up into the mirror to see a figure standing right behind me, I didn't have much time to react. I grabbed the gun from the counter and snapped before firing a shot. Nothing was there, all I did was put a bullet hole in the wall. I ended up putting some duct tape over the hole, I'll call someone in the morning. I wouldn't have been surprised if one of my neighbors called the cops. I didn't sleep again. I was stirring at every sound I heard. The constant feeling of being watched. At one point I turned over in bed to a shadowy figure standing in my doorway. I blinked and it was gone. I kept my gun on my nightstand all night, I thought there was nothing, no I knew there was nothing to be worried about. I was just sleep deprived and I was seeing things. There was no one in the house. I was just worried and I got scared by some old homeless man. Pepper, that was a long pause. Sarah, this next part is just really hard. Pepper, take your time, we have all night. Sarah, thank you, morning came and I called someone to come repair the hole in the wall. I didn't want to be alone in my house anymore, so I asked the repair service if I could leave a key and they could just come in to work while I wasn't home. They agreed, and I called my neighbor Scott to see if I could stay in his house for the night. He was a nice guy, Scott was a tall skinny guy with brown hair and beautiful blue eyes. I always liked him. He let me stay, and I went over immediately. I explained to him what was going on, he was supportive. We hung out most of the day and nothing weird happened. I started to think it was all in my head. I even felt safe enough to go upstairs and shower alone. I went back downstairs to go lay on the couch and sleep. Scott was just standing in the kitchen just staring at the fridge. What are you doing, you weirdo? I said while chuckling. He didn't respond, something was dripping from his head. Scott? He turned around. Fuck. His lower jaw looked like it had been ripped out. His eyes were hanging out of their sockets. He fell to the floor, I ran to him trying to feel for a pulse. 
It was stupid who the hell could have survived that. I was just being hopeful I guess. That's when I saw him standing near the couch in the living room. A shadowy figure, blood stained his hands. His eyes were glowing red. I was terrified, my brain was telling me to run, it was screaming at me to move. Move your fucking legs. I screamed at myself. I moved hard so I got out of that house started moving through the brushes towards. Mine I looked behind me to see that creature behind me, its legs moving in ways that shouldn't be possible for the human body, almost like it had no bones, and the noise it was making. Pepper, explain the noise this is very important. Sarah, it sounded when you slide something heavy against a hardwood floor and scratches it. You know, like the crew. Pepper, shit. Sarah, what do you mean shit? Pepper, continue the story Sarah, I need a second to think. Sarah, I tripped sometime while in the forest and when I did. I couldn't see it anywhere. I took my moment of peace to call the police. I tried to explain to the lady there was a shadow monster chasing me and it killed my friend. But the line was cut. I tried to call back but there was nothing the call wouldn't go through. There it was standing above me. Its mouth opened to a white glow and something fell out of it on my forehead. It was a tooth. I'm sure it was one of Scott's. I crawled and cried as it moved towards me mouth agape. It was gonna kill me. It grabbed me by my leg pulling me towards it. Its mouth widened while pulling my legs in. I cried, I kicked, I screamed, I did everything in my power to escape. It all seemed hopeless, but then nothing short of a miracle happened. I heard the beautiful sound of a shotgun racking a shell before the loud gunshot. The round blew a hole through the creatures and it screamed in agony. I couldn't help but laugh at its misery. It let go of me and scurried off into the woods. The man with the gun took my hand and led me to his truck next thing I know I was here in your office. Pepper, thank you Sarah, this interview has brought a lot to the table and I think I know what we are dealing with. My associate outside will take you to a place you'll be safe until we can deal with the entity. I promise you have nothing to worry about. Sarah, thank you. Tape end, 6 colon 17 am asterisk. I lied to Sarah and while I truly feel bad about it I was left with no other choice. See the creature is something I've dealt with before and it always ends the same way. The entity which the organization has named a yonder. Yonders hunt those who fail the test brought upon by it. The test can present itself in many different ways from an actual physical test to a morality test. In Sarah's case I believe the test was the old man asking for change, after she was rude and failed to give the man the change the yonder chose her as the target. The thing about yonders is they are relentless in their hunt. They will kill anyone who gets in the way of their target. Their goal isn't simply to kill their target but to consume them whole. Yonders cannot be killed and it's best to give them what they want in order to avoid more bloodshed. Sarah could have avoided Scott's death if she simply never got him involved. But that being said I must inform you of Sarah's eventual fate. I'm sure you could guess this but she is dead. Sarah and my associate outside, who was also listening to the interview and had already figured it was a yonder, 6.31 am went to a nearby motel which is owned by the organization. There my associate left Sarah and went to his car to smoke knowing by the time he was finished she would be gone. He heard her scream and didn't return to the room until the screaming had finished. Just like that Sarah was gone. I know you might think wrong of me and the organization I work for but I assure you I did what would result in the smallest loss of life. While Sarah's death was unfortunate it was necessary. While yonders are one of the many supernatural entities that room our world they are especially dangerous. Their test can be ultimately anything and there is no way to know when a test has taken place. I inform you of this simply because I believe it is important to know. I leave you with this story with this one bit of advice. Always be scared. Subscribe for part 2.